the NAFTA in 1948 haven't stopped since. As you're witnessing every day, more Palestinians have been killed on the last seven plus months. And millions of people have been planes and their houses have been destroyed. We cannot talk enough about the hospitals, we cannot talk about the schools, about the universities, about the mothers, about the children. But Israel, since its creation, since they created the idea and the entity of Israel, ethnic cleansing never stopped. I am one of those results. I grew up, I born in a refugee camp, and my family is still refugees since 1948. Four generations, we still carry a special refugee ID, ID in Lebanon, and many on Syria, on Jordan, and the rest of the world. I will remember those people who have been ethnically cleansed and living on these refugee camps. At the same time, this anniversary is telling us we should have hope that this massacres, God willing, will be the last. And liberation and the horizon. Palestinian people prove to be resilient people and their relationship with the, their land, their identity, have been proven again and again for 76 years. As you have responsibility here as American, as a Vermoner, I ask you to sign these sheets, Apartheid Free Community. We are trying to spread it all over Vermont. We need to live in apartheid free community here, and we have to work with the rest of the world to make Palestine apartheid free community, free of occupation, free of apartheid, of racism, that everybody can live equal on that land. For the people, who lives in Burlington and registered on the city of Burlington, they can sign this sheet. For the neighboring towns or any towns in Vermont, I wish they can talk to us, take the sheet, copy the information, and present apartheid free community in their own municipalities. For the people who are members of unions or members of any kind of companies, part of a group, part of a church, I wish they can take the same language and introduce it to their organizations because we need it very bad. Of course, our opponents, they going to say, well, this is to bring divestment and boycott and sanctions. We are transparent enough and to say proudly, yes, we are doing that. And this is the first step. This is an education tool to the public to tell them that Israel as an apartheid state, as an occupation state, no longer accepted. I appreciate you here, and we ask a lot of you, but this is going to be for months and months to go. So we're going to ask for volunteers. Please give us your name, and if you can volunteer with us this coming Saturdays on the farmer's market, if you can come in front of the churches to collect those signatures, we appreciate it a lot. The struggle goes on, but our freedom is from your freedom, and your freedom from ours. We will do it all together. Thank you.
Okay, um, I like to see a two-state solution. Uh, maybe Palestine can be run by the Palestinian Authority instead of Hamas. Maybe they can have last in peace and not have any more wars. Maybe the U.S. should push for that. So my name is John Hermans. I'm 77 years old, a retired forester from Essex Junction. And I've been involved in this uh, issue for about 20 years. And people ask me, well, why, what, what drives you? Why are you involved in this issue? There's so many problems in the world. Well, the reason I'm involved is because I pay taxes in the United States. And the United States is using my tax money to pay for bombs to drop on civilians, not only in Gaza, but in the West Bank, and killing children and women, destroying their homes, destroying their churches, destroying their universities, destroying their schools and their community centers. There's no place left. 70% of the homes in Gaza have been destroyed. And that's my tax money. So I'm complicit in this in this uh, horror show. It's called the Nakba, which means catastrophe. It didn't start last year. It's been going on for 76 years. This is the 76th year of the Nakba. And that's why I'm involved. Hi, um, I am actually from Bosnia, originally from Bosnia, and uh, my country went through genocide, and like whole world knows that. And I am here with Palestinian, like solidarity for Palestinian, because I know how one day in occupation looks like. I know how it looks like being afraid of your neighbor, being afraid of someone who is next to you. You don't know what they believe, what they think of you. So I'm here to support Palestinian in their struggle to be free people. So I, when I lived in Bosnia, the situation was so bad, like every night I was so afraid to go to bed because I uh, don't know who's going to be at my door, who's going to knock and what's going to happen to me, to my family and my neighbors. And the uh, sad part was like, I have no one to call. I have phone, but I have no one to call. There is no police I can call because they're not on my side. Uh, army, soldier, they are around you, but you are afraid even of them. You have to hide yourself wherever you can. So you're just trying to survive day after day. So because living in this occupation, for such a long time and seeing my family got killed and missing and still I have some member I don't even know where they are and uh, going through all of this I cannot be silent I'm here to support and say no more genocide and um, I have one question for Bernie Sanders I loved him I vote for him my kids and I really was grateful uh, he was here in Burlington. But I listened to him and listen and listen and listen. Always, always he defends Israel and always we know where he start. I have a question for him. Why he never start from Nagba? Why he never talk about Nagba? If he can address this, I want to know what he think about Nagbas. I want to know what he think about 75 years of occupation of Palestinians. And we know where history start. It's not there. Everybody knows that. I want Bernie to address this question about Nagba. And please, Bernie, don't be silent anymore because we know. Thank you. I am a Palestinian refugee in Lebanon and by saying refugee I am a result of uh, Israeli occupation to Palestine in 1948. Yesterday, May 14th, Israel celebrated 76th anniversary of its creation. Today we are commemorating 76th anniversary of the Palestinian Nakba. Nakba it means catastrophe in English. Nakba, it means w the end of the Palestinian not only having their own land, but even having their own identity, ha owning the, to their own future. So hundreds of thousands, at least 140,000 Palestinians, they became refugees in states around Palestine, in Lebanon, in Syria, Jordan, Iraq, and Egypt. 
524 Palestinian villages and town have been destroyed completely and erased from the map. For that, every year the Palestinians commemorate this anniversary with a great pain and sadness. And while in 1948 this great ethnic cleansing of Palestinians happened, it didn't stop in 1948. It happened again in 1956, it happened again in 1967, and on and on. Many Palestinian refugees are refugees on the West Bank, on Gaza too. As a matter of fact, 70% of the Gazan inhabitants are refugees from the Nakba of 1948. And now they are becoming refugees within Gaza Strip to the, Rafah, to the city of Rafah. They are still facing the genocide that we faced 76 years ago. It keeps repeating itself. We have to ask the major question, why is still happening and why still the American public and the government are silent about it? For the American government, they are part of this crime. For the American public, if they stay silent about it, they are part of that crime. So we ask them to stand with the Palestinian people and to stand with the human rights and equal rights to the Palestinian people and end the occupation and apartheid laws that Israel inflicting on the Palestinian people. And thank you. I'm Cliff Bennett and I've had the privilege of being in Israel, Palestine uh, four different times already. And in 2014, I had the opportunity to visit the town of Berlin. And most of you know about the security wall there. Well, in Berlin, the Israeli people uh, in many places, and especially in Berlin, did not follow the green line. So those farmers there lost about 400 acres of farmland. And on the other side of that security wall now, is uh, a settlement and those people, the, the men are studying the scriptures and getting their education kind of things and they don't really know about farming. But the town of Berlin says we want our land back and worked with national and international agencies that eventually the Israeli courts, it's the only time it's happened, they won their court case and get it back. I was back again in 2022 and was able to visit in Berlin and even be able to pick olives from the olive trees. Now those trees, the older that they get, there are certain chemicals in them that makes it healthier for we who are the consumers. And yet Israel takes those olive trees from the Palestinians and takes them off their land, takes them to a nursery and sells them to the settlements or to the settlers, the Israelis wanting, wanting to have an olive tree. Then um, also, in taking of the land, I had the opportunity to visit uh, the Ida, Re Ida refugee camp in Bethlehem. And they have the security wall going through their camp. And I learned that when that security wall was built, that the wall separates the olive trees, the fruit trees from the camp now. And there's no way that the refugees in the camp can have access uh, to that part of their, their daily food sources. But what they've started to do is they are now doing hydroponic gardening up in their rooftops. So the Palestinians are not willing to give up. And we in the United States, I personally think, need to learn from them how to be able to do resistance as well as they're doing. Thank you.